Konnichiwa everyone! Welcome to our Chuba Japan travel series. To make the most of our six-day trip, we wanted to arrive in Japan in the morning and fly out at night on our last day. Thankfully, Jetstar offers flights between Manila and Nagoya that perfectly suit our itinerary. Let's talk here about stuff from the moment we arrived at the airport in Manila to our arrival in Nagoya, including some basic travel information. For Filipino travelers going to Japan, here are the basic requirements at any airline's check-in counter. If you have check-in baggage, make sure it's included in your ticket booking. Some passengers on our flight didn't realize their ticket did not include any baggage allowance. Jetstar allows more than one piece of baggage as long as within the weight allowance. Please note that Jetstar weighs all hand-carried bags. Now these are what you need to have before facing an immigration officer. Please research the new e-travel process before entering or leaving the Philippines. First time traveling abroad? Don't worry, even seasoned travelers like us get asked trivial questions. Just relax and have a presence of mind while speaking to the officer. After immigration is the security check. These are the requirements. We strongly recommend that you empty your pockets and take off and secure all your valuables inside your bag, even before going through immigration. After getting through the security check, we claimed our SIM card at the Big Sky kiosk. We booked it on Kluk. We normally buy on Kluk, but it's the first time we tried this merchant. We chose it because the opening time of other merchants at the Chubu Centra International Airport is a few hours after our arrival. This was like a generic SIM that connects with partner networks upon arrival in the country of destination. It took hours before we were able to establish a connection to a network, and there were several times when we lost the connection. It was quite stressful because our itinerary was heavily reliant on Google Maps. So would we recommend it? Based on our experience, Let's just say we prefer those we get in Japan. Okay, having that out of the way, how was our flight? There were minus points from the get-go. First, it got delayed by more than two hours, but the announcements were not clear. Our original departure time was 12.25 a.m., but we noticed on the board above the check-in counter that the departure time was 1 a.m. We asked the staff and they said the flight was delayed. When we reached the boarding gate, it still showed 12.25 a.m. We approached their personnel at the boarding gate to clarify if the flight was actually moved to 1 a.m., and the response to us was, ma'am, just wait for announcements. I told her, we just need a more specific answer so we would know if we could still go to the toilet, which is far from here, because it's near boarding time now based on the original departure time. Then she just said, yes, you may still go to the toilet. The flight is not 12.25. How difficult was it to give a clearer answer? When they announced that the flight was moved to 1 a.m. due to some aircraft-related reason, many passengers reacted, so it seems many were not informed at the check-in counter. Second, Jetstar has a step in their boarding procedure that we didn't like. After boarding the priority passengers and those seated beside exit doors, they board all those seated on A and F seats, which are the window seats. We thought, okay, that works. That way, aisle and middle passengers wouldn't have to stand up to let the window passengers in. We thought they would call those at B and E seats next, then the aisle passengers last. But they called in everybody else after that, so the remaining passengers still got in each other's way while placing their bags on the overhead cabin, and some seated already in aisle seats having to stand up to let in those in the middle. If they really wanted passenger boarding to be systematic, they should have continued letting people in according to seats from window going to aisle seats. Or better yet, they should board in clusters according to row number, from the farthest rows from the door going nearer. The third issue we had with Jetstar was that seating assignment was, for a lack of better term, stupid. There were rows including ours where some rows were fully occupied while there were several, as in several rows that were completely empty as you may see in this picture. Our row was one of those fully occupied, and in the case of our seatmate, she and her companion were seated rows apart considering they were under one booking. We've been on so many flights and have also experienced having few passengers on the plane, but this was the first time we've seen this. Even if their objective was to balance the weight, we didn't think it would be difficult to seat together passengers under the same booking. Why cause such inconvenience to their passengers? After takeoff, the two of them just transferred to an empty row so they would be seated together. Otherwise, we would have transferred instead of being cramped up for four hours. Passengers from other filled rows did the same. 
Okay, moving along, how is the seat space and legroom? My height is 5 foot 3 and I was seated properly here. My companion is 5 foot 7. This legroom was relatively better than what we had on our Jetstar plane to Singapore and our Cebu Pacific plane to Osaka. For in-flight meals, you need to pre-book it. But you can buy snacks, drinks as well as some merchandise on board. We didn't buy any food or drinks from them so we can't comment about it. Overall, the actual 4-hour flight was pretty smooth. We tried to sleep as much since it's a red-eye flight. Unfortunately, the seats could not be reclined and were quite uncomfortable. Not complaining much about that since we booked a low-cost carrier. Comfort costs more. What are needed when you arrive in Japan? Here are the things you need to present at the immigration. The system shows our previous Japan trip so normally we just hand the documents, scan the QR code and wait for the officer to process our entry and return our passport and other documents back. We have seen passengers being asked different questions or documents by the immigration officer. Don't worry we believe as long as you are qualified to enter Japan your documents are complete and you are able to answer their questions well you'll be fine. This is the arrival card needed at the immigration upon arrival in Japan. After immigration you'll go through customs, and this is the customs declaration form required. Jetstar gave out these forms upon boarding the plane. You don't need them if you have done it online on Visit Japan Web and got a QR code. Now how can you have a QR code for Japan Immigration and Customs Declaration? Go to this link to create an account which you will use every time you visit Japan. Then you need to create a profile for your upcoming trip, which gathers information needed on the arrival card. Then once you complete the customs declaration form, it will generate the QR code for your trip. Take a screenshot so you won't need to open your Visit Japan web account upon arrival. We recommend that you do it online and complete it days before your trip. It is more convenient and one less thing to do when you arrive in Japan. Jetstar's flight to Nagoya lands at Terminal 2 of Chubu Centra International Airport. If you're going to take the train to Nagoya Station, you need to transfer first to Terminal 1. There is a free shuttle between the two terminals, but you can also walk. It's quite a distance, but there's a walkway with several walkalators for convenience. By the way, just for those who need it, both Terminal 1 and 2 of Chubu Centra has indoor designated smoking rooms before and after security check. Oh, before we forget, please note that in Terminal 2, after getting off the plane, we entered the airport building, took a few flights of stairs and walked quite a distance before we reached immigration. There was no escalator and we didn't notice any elevator. We hoped there's one and we just didn't see it. Otherwise, it would be weird for Japan to not provide that for those with mobility issues. From Terminal 1, we went to the train station, loaded 1,000 yen to our PASMO card, and used it to ride the Meitetsu train to Nagoya Station. We got on the Limited Express unreserved car, which costs 980 yen. You can also buy a ticket if you don't have an IC card. If you want a reserved seat, you must buy a separate ticket for 450 yen. For those not yet familiar with them, these IC cards are loadable cards you can use on different transportation lines, convenience stores and vending machines in Japan. Japan has different IC cards you can buy in different regions. There has been a shortage of Suica and Pasmo cards since last year, but we believe you can still buy Manaka cards from train stations in Nagoya. If you don't have an IC card yet, we totally recommend that you get one because it is very useful whenever you go to Japan. There you have it. We hope we were able to give you some useful tips for traveling from Manila to Nagoya in one piece so to speak. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and watch out for more upcoming posts on our Chubu Japan travel series. Always remember, whenever we visit another country, we should not expect them to understand our ignorance. It is our responsibility to research about their culture. Bottom line, it's all about respect. Till the next one, thanks for watching.